It's very easy to look back and laugh at old computers from the 80s and 90s, whether it's at their clunky designs or ridiculously outdated specs. All right, check out this bad boy. 12 megabytes of RAM, 500 megabyte hard drive, built-in spreadsheet capabilities, and a modem that transmits at over 28,000 BPS. Wow. But it's important to remember that at the time, designs like these were considered cutting edge and high tech. And I guarantee that in 15 years time or so, we will look back at the flagship devices of today and laugh at how ancient they look. I was recently fortunate enough to be able to visit the Apple Museum in Prague, which holds the largest private collection of Apple products in the world. And say what you want about Apple, there's no denying they've had an extremely influential role in the history of computer and laptop design in the last 30 years. Let's examine what it was about these products' design that made them so iconic at the time, and why they're so distinctively Apple. This is the PowerBook 100, a device released in October of 1991, at a time where laptops were beginning to come a little more mainstream. And let's do a quick product analysis on it. This product was one of the last to incorporate elements of Apple's iconic Snow White design language, which lasted from 1984 to 1990. The design language was created by a company called Frog Design, who worked with Apple throughout these years. The main characteristics of this design scheme were the decorative vertical and horizontal stripes, minimal surface textures, and off-white colours. These are found in almost every Apple product and accessory from 1984 to 1990 and gave Apple an instantly recognisable design style. However, this design trend didn't age well and in 1990 Apple wanted to move away from that style that they built up over the last seven years. And so they were faced with the task of creating a new design language. This was quite a paradox as the designers had to construct a new set of design rules for their products to follow, giving the products a refreshing new look but not so different that it wouldn't be instantly recognisable as an Apple product. This shows a brief summary of the most important aspects of the Snow White design language. Minimal surface textures, two distinct colour schemes, a light grey one featuring no accents and darker grey cables, or an off-white colour scheme featuring beige highlights and cables. No flaps around the ports or slots, these were common with other manufacturers, and recessed icons to identify ports. A slightly three-dimensional Apple logo, with the now iconic multicoloured Apple. A lack of any draft angles, with all internal product walls being either perpendicular or parallel to each other. This ties in with the horizontal and vertical hatching on the vents middle on most products from this era, as well as a load of technical dimensions. Now let's take a look at Apple's 1991 PowerBook 100, the first product in the new laptop series from the company, just after they began their move away from Frog Design's Snow White style. The most notable change is the departure from the fog or platinum colours. These were replaced with an entirely new colour scheme, consisting of much darker grey colours. This huge change to the colour schemes breathed new life into the products, and yet the designers continued to only use shades of grey. The darker colours gave the devices a more corporate look, and there is no denying that this was a significant change, but the rules stated in the Snow White design language weren't abandoned totally, instead they were just altered. If Apple had made the jump to crazy colourful laptops, or had totally abandoned the idea of clear colour swatches, then the laptops would seem out of place. But by still only using shades of grey, they kept the company's identity. Let's examine another aspect of the device, the trackball and rounded hinge. These are both elements that have to be rounded due to obvious technical limitations. But look at the way the designers treated them in these two products. This is the Macintosh Portable, which features the same trackball and cylindrical hinge as the PowerBook 100. On the PowerBook that came after the Snow White design language, the feature's roundness has been embraced, with the trackball having rounded buttons around it. The hinge also has curved sides, which is a stark contrast from the very flat edges of the Macintosh Portable's hinge, that only have a very small bevel, and this beveled edge still adheres very closely to the rules laid out in the Snow White design language. However, if we look elsewhere on the device, it's still very rectangular and boxy, showing that the original design philosophy from the 80s hasn't been totally abandoned. This was Apple's transitional stage between the extremely chunky and square devices of the 1980s and the very rounded, colourful devices of the late 90s and early 2000s, such as the iconic iMac G3. These were Apple's three main design styles of the last 35 years, but which is your favourite? I'm intrigued to know. And if you'd like me to make another in-depth video covering any of these design styles, then let me know in the comments. Thanks for making it to the end, and if you're interested in these kinds of videos, then I've got plenty more here on my channel. My name's T Sutton, and I'll see you in the next video.